In this guide, we're going to learn how to set up multiple Laravel applications on a single Apache server. And we're going to make those applications accessible via unique domains. Now, this guide assumes that you've already had the experience of setting up a single Laravel application on Apache server. So you know the basics of that. I'm not going to go into those details. I have a whole separate guide on that that goes through the steps for that. This is going to assume that you already have the applications on the server. They're ready to run. We just need to see how we can configure them to serve up via unique domains. So knowing that, let me talk about what I've already done just to summarize the steps to get us to this point. Um, I've already made sure that my server is ready to run Laravel applications. So it has the necessary PHP modules. URL rewriting is enabled so that we can uh, work with our routing system in Laravel. And we have Composer installed so we can pull in our outside dependencies. As for the specific applications themselves, I've cloned them from GitHub so they exist on the server. I ran Composer install to get all of the outside dependencies for each application. I created the environment files for those applications, and I set the appropriate permissions on the storage and bootstrap cache directories. Right, these are the basic steps we run to just get a Laravel application running on a server. Um, and just to show that, let me uh, switch over to my code editor. I'm uh, already SSH'd into the server via my code editor. And in my var www directory, if we look at the contents, here are my two applications I'm going to be demonstrating with. I've got demo1 and demo2. And if we go into uh, demo1, just as an example, you can see basic Laravel uh, contents within here. There's that environment file. If we were to look at our storage directory, we could see we've got the appropriate permissions there. All right, so basically these two applications are ready to go. We just need to set up the Apache site configs for them. To do that, I will create a config file for each of the sites in my ETC Apache 2 sites available directory. So let's copy that path and change into it. And you can generate these files however you want. I'm going to use VS Code's code command to create them. So we're going to start with demo1.conf and also create demo2.conf. Going back to the notes, we can grab a template for the configs we'll use in these files. So we're going to grab this virtual host block, and I'll paste that into each of my config files. And then let's edit this as appropriate. So for server name, we're going to indicate the domain we're going to use to access this application. Uh, and for our demo one application, I have a domain I'm not currently using for anything else, so it's good for this example, and that's just hesweb.xyz. For document root, we want to indicate uh, the public directory within the application itself. So I'm just going to update this to demo1 forward slash public. And then the same thing for the settings for that directory, we want to make sure this path is uh, matches our document root. For things like our log files, we can specify uh, custom names for those files, and I'm just going to prefix it with the name of the application. So I'm going to save those changes and then go over to demo2.conf. And for the server name here, I don't have another domain that's not being used for anything else. So I'm just going to set this up via a subdomain. It's going to be a very similar process. So I'm just going to call this demo, and I'll put it on my codewithsusan.com domain. Once again, we'll update the document root and directory as appropriate for the application. And we will edit the names of our log files. With those two configs set up, we need to enable them. And coming back to the notes, we can do that with this command a 2 site or enable site, followed by the name of the configuration file. So let's run that. I'm still in my site's available directory when I run this. So it's going to be a 2 site. We'll start with demo1.conf. And then we'll do the same thing for demo2. And then as instructed, we need to restart Apache to make these changes take effect. And we could do that with the system control reload Apache 2 command. And just for some background information on what that actually did, it just created a symbolic link for the config files we created in the sites available directory over to a directory called sites enabled. And I'll go ahead and show that now. So I'm going to move out of sites available and over into sites enabled. And if we look at the contents, you can see there's our demo one and demo two config files, and they're just symbolically linked to the config file within sites available. Uh, so basically that's how you enable sites is you just have them linked to this sites enabled directory. The other thing you could do just to check that things are set up correctly is you can run the command Apache control with the dash S flag. And it's just going to output some config information about your virtual hosts. So skimming through here, we could see our virtual host set up for those two domains and the corresponding config files. So that's all we need to do on the server side of things in terms of configuring our sites. Let's now turn our attention to configuring our domains. So I'm going to pull up my domain provider, which is Namecheap. I'm going to find first my hesweb.xyz domain, and I'm going to go to Manage. And then I want to find my DNS settings. 
Now, of course, the interface you see is going to vary depending on your domain provider, but every domain provider has a similar control panel. You should be able to poke around and find your DNS settings. And once you do, you should be able to edit your records for that domain, which is going to indicate how that domain behaves. Now, sometimes when you make changes to DNS records, they take a little bit of time to propagate. So I went ahead and set up this information before recording this video. And let me just summarize what I did. I created an A record, which is short for address record. I set the A record host to be this at sign. In the world of DNS settings, we refer to this as an apex. You could think of it as a wild card. We're basically saying any incoming traffic to this domain is gonna point to, in this case, it's gonna point to this IP address, which is the IP address of the server that I'm working on. And then for TTL or time to live, I just uh, set it to the minimum amount of time uh, so that the changes would propagate as quickly as possible. All right, so that's the settings I already had in place. Uh, if I was just coming here and I didn't have settings, I could just go through the process of adding a new record. I could choose a record, fill everything in and save it. All right, so with that record there, and based on the settings I made on the server in that uh, Apache config file, I should be able to test this out. I should be able to go to hesweb.xyz and it should load up that demo one application. Let's try this out. And perfect, that's what I'm expecting to see. Uh, this is really just a bare bones Laravel application. I just went in and customized the welcome blade view just with this basic output, just to make it clear that we are in fact loading the demo one application. All right, so now let's uh, set up our second domain for the demo two application. And once again, I will find my DNS settings. And this is an active domain that I use. So I have several DNS records uh, in place, but the one we wanna focus on is the second one. Once again, I created an A record. Uh, this time, instead of using that Apex or that wildcard for the host, I am uh, specifying a specific subdomain of demo. And then I'm pointing to that same server's IP address. So let's test this out. Let's go to demo code with Susan.com and see if it routes to our demo two application. And perfect, hello from demo two. So the end result is we have two separate domains. One is a subdomain, but they are pointing to two separate Laravel applications, both running on the same server. And what's happening is when our domain provider is directing traffic to our server, those Apache site configs are responsible for routing that traffic to the appropriate directory. Right? Just jumping back to our config files, when our server sees a request coming in from this domain, it knows to use this particular path as the document root. And then the same thing for demo one, when traffic comes for this domain, it's routing it to this directory. So with that, we now know how to set up multiple Laravel applications on the same server and access them from unique domains. If you have any questions about this process, if something didn't work on your end as I showed in the video, feel free to leave a comment below and I can help you troubleshoot.